Hi there. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to connect your email service provider with your Squarespace website so you can start gathering email addresses and building that email list. Before we get going, let me introduce myself if we haven't already met. I'm Meg, and I'm a yoga and meditation teacher turned Squarespace web designer for wellness pros. I'm here to help you elevate your business and your website without the tech overwhelm. And I'm also the founder of Floating Lotus Design. So it's really not hard to get your email service connected in Squarespace and start building that list, whether you're using Squarespace's native email campaigns or a third party provider. So let's hop over into my demo site and I'll show you how to get it done. Okay, here we are back in my demo site and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to connect your email service provider and to start collecting email addresses. So let's just go into our page here and hit edit. And I'm gonna bring up this section. Let me just make this a little bit bigger so you can see. And let's just start by adding a block. So when you wanna start collecting email, if you are using Squarespace's native email marketing, or MailChimp, or sometimes if you're using Zapier or moving things to Google Drive, you're just going to start here with the newsletter block. And that will automatically populate some basic information. Let's see here. So this is kind of the default subscribe, sign up with your email address, gives a spot for the email address and your sign up button. And you can, again, play with how that is vertically. If we want to edit some more of that, here's the nuts and bolts. So here you can see where the title, so you can edit this. You can, instead of saying sub subscribe, it can say, yeah, yeah. let's stay in touch. Dr. Spill, <laughs> stay in touch. You can change the description. So you have complete control over this. You can change which text you have in your, in your button. You can require a name field, so it'll add that in as well if you want them to do that. And you can show what it says after they submit, whether it's a, a message that says, hey, thanks for signing up, or maybe you want to redirect them to a different page or something like that. But that's all right within here. So that's just the basics of the form. I'm going to turn that off so it's a bit cleaner. Now for design. Design is really pretty straightforward here. It's this is what they call a float. And if you select it stack, it's more vertical. And again, you can choose your alignment based on where you're placing it in your site. And background, by default in your styles, you have a background set for monks. So if you want to turn the background on, now this comes up with a white background or like bounces in the section, you can play around here with formatting that as well. You can make the pattern smaller, you can customize that, you can make the corners round. Play around with that to your heart's content. Here's what I really want to get to, the storage. So when you're using the newsletter, you have these storage options here. So first is if you're using Squarespace email com campaigns, you would go in here and select the pertinent settings, or you have other storage options. And here's where you can connect to MailChimp if you use MailChimp. If you prefer to use Zapier to connect to, you will connect to your Zapier account and then would send information from your newsletter block to you know, potentially your email service provider or someplace else you're trying to capture that information. And you also have the option to connect to Google Drive and send the information to a file in your Google Drive, which maybe you're manually uploading someplace else. But those are the three native ones that you have to choose from plus the Squarespace email campaigns when you are using a newsletter. But what if you are using a third-party provider, a different email service provider like ActiveCampaign, or in my case, I like to use Flowdesk or ConvertKit. How would you connect with that? So when there's not a native connection, let me come in and add this. I am going to delete that. So to enable that, you have to get a little bit more creative, but it's still pretty easy. Most of your major email service providers will have the ability for you to grab a link or get a piece of code for your form and allow you to drop that into Squarespace. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to do that here. So to do that, we're going to add a block, but in this case, we're not going to add a newsletter block. 
we're going to add code block. And hello world, that's the default. So when we go into edit that, what we're going to do is I've already copied some code from my ConvertKit email provider. And I've copied that code and I'm just going to paste it right in here. And then you hit save. And you'll see my form pops right up there. My first name, my email address, my subscribe. So this is just a simple form that I have set up in, in ConvertKit and it populates that way. Now, can I play around with it? Sure. <laughs> I can definitely play around with, again, how much space it takes up. I can, all of those things. But that's pretty much it. You're not going to be able to do a ton more than that because you're really just copying and pasting code. And you'll notice that when you're in edit mode, it's not going to show the form. You can see the script disabled. Don't let that concern you. Just want to hit save, publish your changes, and then it'll show up. So you see how this changed by me, you know, adjusting the size and width of where it shows up. But this comes in handy with... Um, you, you have a little bit more flexibility if you want, but you can play with this the same way you would journalize. You can then move this block around. You can place it in your footer. You can put it next to an image. But that is basically how you would connect to a third-party provider. So now when somebody goes in and enters their name and email address and hit subscribe, that information is getting sent directly to ConvertKit in this, in this case. So you're not limited if you're using a third-party provider. You just need to use the code block instead of the news newsletter block. Well, I hope you found that tutorial helpful. If you did, I'd love it if you just hit that like button down below and let me know. And as always, you can leave me a comment if there's other things that you'd like to see here on the channel in the future. And if you're just getting started and are looking for some help building that email list and don't know which provider to try, I highly recommend Flowdesk and ConvertKit. I both use them and recommend them highly. They're great for wellness businesses. I have some links down below in the descriptions where you can start a free trial and check those out. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.